Kevin Gosman on the mound for your Toronto Blue Jays on a Tuesday night in the six. Take out that seven-run first inning at Houston and that five-run second inning at Boston. And the rest of the 2023 so far for Kevin Gosman has been absolute chef's kiss. Absolute top tier. In today's Locked On Blue Jays episode, we'll take a look at what does Gosman have to do to combat this Yankee team tonight. Also going to be joined later in the show by Locked On Yankees for a crossover conversation. Looking forward to that. You are Locked On Blue Jays, your daily Toronto Blue Jays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, friends. Craig Ballard, Locked On Blue Jays, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm absolutely thankful that you're choosing to spend part of your day talking Toronto Blue Jay baseball with me. For those of you checking this out on YouTube, please hit that that subscribe so we can enjoy this 2023 season together. And for those of you taking this in as a podcast, making Locked On Blue Jays your first podcast listen every day, I see you. I certainly tip my hat to you. I thank you to, to those like Coach Keith uh, making a part of their uh, commute to and from work every day. I see you, Coach Keith, and I appreciate you. Thank you for that. I see Maya. Might be me. It's M-I-A as a new subscriber uh, yesterday on the YouTube channel as well. So just want to recognize, acknowledge, and thank all of you for that. You guys are helping Locked On Blue Jays podcast grow. Much appreciated. Thank you for that. Locked on Blue Jays, right? Well, what's going on with the Toronto Blue Jays on a Tuesday night in the six? Kevin Gosman on the mound against Domingo Herman of the New York Yankees. Now, we'll get to Gosman in a moment here. I'm so excited every time Gosman pitches. It's it's like 2022 Alec Manoa, really, with how good Gosman has been so far this season in 2023. We'll get to the big fella in a moment here. Domingo Herman. Now, Vlad hit a... Uh, you may remember the, the last time the, the Blue Jays were, were in... Uh, New York to to get together with the New York Yankees. They faced Herman. Vlad hit a first inning home run against Domingo Herman. That was the Brandon Belt game. Remember, Belt would hit a home run later on in that game as well. To I believe took a, a two one Blue Jay lead to four one, and the Blue Jays would never look back in that game. You remember that as the Brandon Belt game, right? Now in his career. He's done very well against a, a lot of these Blue Jay hitters, if truth be told. Uh, Bo Bichette, the hitting machine that is Bo Bichette, just three for 11 against uh, Domingo Herman in his career. Now, the glass half full, two of those three hits did leave the ballpark, right? So hopefully uh, the Bo, Bo can get one out uh, tonight against Domingo Herman. I can't imagine we'll see Kevin Biggio tonight, but with the way John Schneider runs these lineups, I mean, who who really knows, right? But I, I say that because Biggio 0 for 8 in his career against Domingo Herman. Wow. Is, wow. <laughs> Matt Chapman, somebody that we're desperately looking to get going, in particular at home for the Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, again, every day as well. No, we, we've, we've been following Matt Chapman very, very closely. His April was eye pop emoji it was incredible his may has been every bit as bad as, as great as spectacular as his april was may has been every bit as bad and in his career matt chapman just two for 13 against domingo herman so i'm not exactly confident that herman has the the cure for for what ails matt chapman uh, now Whit Merrifield, Dalton Varsho, two Blue Jays who have heated up in in May in particular, they're a combined 0 for 8 against Domingo Herman. So Herman has had some success against the Blue Jays in his career. Uh, certainly worth mentioning that at Yankee Stadium, he's been awesome. He's he's not walking a lot at Yankee Stadium, and he's striking out a ton of batters at Yankee Stadium on the road. It's the exact opposite. So hey, some glass half full stuff for the Blue Jays offense tonight. In fact, this will be Herman's fourth road start. Now, the Blue Jays, or sorry, the, the Yankees, I mean, are 2-1 and one in his previous three road starts. I mean, obviously, that's legit. But in his 14 road innings so far this season, Herman, nine walks. That's led to 10 runs. He's got, at Yankee Stadium, his ERA is just a titch over three. He's been good at home. On the road, his ERA is just a titch under six. Again, I'm going to say cause for optimism for this Blue Jay lineup tonight. The curveball for Domingo Herman, that's that's the, the 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 key to watch tonight. Man, it has been so good. It is by far and away his top strikeout pitch. If you got two strikes against Domingo Herman, buckle up. That that great curveball is coming. He's trying to punch you out with it. The changeup and the sinker uh, have also, I mean, I'll give him credit. His changeup and his sinker have both been good in 2023 as well. Meanwhile, that fastball is getting rocked. If you're the Toronto Blue Jays tonight, have to be looking to pick out a fastball, in particular early in the count. Opponents so far this season hitting over 300 against Domingo Herman's fastball. As I say, Blue Jays need to be looking to pick out that fastball, in particular early in the count. Herman has given up seven home runs so far this season. Four of them, more than half, on that fastball. His fly balls are way up this season as well, which is interesting to note because he's only had two previous starts at Rogers Center. Gave up three home runs in those two previous starts, though. And, of course, now 
the likelihood of home runs is increased, right? These, these fences have been moved in. So again, a lot of glass half full things tonight for the Toronto Blue Jays and this offense. One really weird thing about Domingo Herman, and, and you know, FanDuel is, is, is a sponsor here on, on the Locked On Podcast Network. Uh, and on Locked On Blue Jays, and and uh, since the beginning of last season, uh, I couldn't believe when I saw this. I was looking at his his road starts, and he's got a bunch. He's got like five or six road starts. He's won some, he's lost some. Where the final score was three to two, so maybe take a look at the under tonight in this Blue Jay game. Now let's get to the main attraction, certainly from a Toronto Blue Jay standpoint, and that is Kevin Gosman. As I said earlier, you you take out that first inning in in Houston, whatever that was, that seven run explosion. That second run inning in Boston, whatever the heck that was, that entire series for the Blue Jays was was a, a blunder, right? Was was just horrible, absolutely atrocious. But my goodness, outside of that, Kevin Gosman's got 46 innings pitched. He's allowed six runs. That's a 1.17 ERA. Wow. In those 46 innings, outside of those two nightmare innings, four walks, 65 strikeouts. Are you absolutely kidding me? <laughs> he has been incredible. The only times he's been in trouble at all this season is when he's missing a spots with his fastball, in particular when he's trying to be elevated with the fastball and it's he's missing a spot and it's uh, you know more to the middle of the plate. But again, you you look at his performance this season; those those rough innings or those times where, where he's struggling and and fighting through his location, few and far between. He's been awesome. Most of these starts have been coming on the road, so he's only had two starts at Rogers Center. Uh, Blue Jays won four to three and won nothing, so couple close games, right? Hopefully not that close tonight, right? I can't take that. But 15 innings pitched so far at home, just three runs allowed, 24 strikeouts at the Rogers Center, one walk, one walk. Two starts, he's got 24 strikeouts. I mean, wow, one walk allowed. Aaron Judge is a, is a really interesting matchup tonight against Kevin Gosman. Judge has been feast or famine against Kevin Gosman. He's 9 for 27 in his career. That's a 333 batting average. I mean, that's very good. Uh, two of those nine hits were doubles. Three of those nine hits were home runs. But the but but uh, Gosman has struck him out 11 times. So pretty much, if it's Gosman versus Judge, we're seeing one of three things. A double or a home run for Judge, boo and boo, or a strikeout for Gosman. Yes, please. Yes, please. Uh, Aaron Judge, a, a dozen home runs in his career at the Rogers Center. Just two last season. He had like a, a you know 240 home runs last season, right? You'd think he'd have a bunch at Rogers Center, played a bunch of games at Rogers Center last season. No, just two, by far his lowest of the AL East ballparks last season. The Kevin Gosman, we, we, we know the Yankees have that new leadoff hitter now, the, that young upstart to a shortstop, Anthony Volpe. Gosman faced Volpe when he faced the Yankees a couple weeks back and absolutely dominated him. Volpe struck out in his first at-bat against Gosman. Volpe struck out in his second at-bat against Gosman. Volpe struck out in his third at-bat against Gosman. 0 for 3 with three strikeouts. My goodness. And right after uh, Volpe in the lineup, of course, here comes here comes big bad uh, uh, Anthony Rizzo, who has been really the MVP of the Yankees so far in 2023. He's kept them afloat amidst all these injuries here. Well, Rizzo in his career against Kevin Gosman, just four for 21 with six strikeouts. Let's go, Kevin Gosman. Let's go, Kevin Gosman. Now, coming up on Locked On Blue Jays, we'll be joined by Locked On Yankees for a crossover conversation to further deep dive to uh, tonight's Yankees Blue Jays pitching matchup and tilt. Now, remember, you can always catch the Blue Jay games on Sirius XM. Now, buying tickets for your favorite sport event shouldn't be stressful. Game time is a fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you're going to have. I used Game Time recently to go to that Romano Jansen bobblehead game, and I was very, very pleased. I was extremely actually pleased with how uh, easy the Game Time app was to use. Flash deals, sorry, flash deals, last-minute deals, easy to find and buy tickets for any kind of event in your area. Images of the seat view, event cancellation protection, job loss protection, and the lowest price guarantee. Now, the game, the, that game time lowest price guarantee, that means you'll always get the best price. In fact, if you do find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you back 110% of the difference. It's the fastest growing ticketing app in the country for a reason. Snag the tickets without the stress with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use the code locked on MLB for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Now, again, create an account and redeem the code locked on MLB for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Tuesday night matchup here Domingo Herman versus Kevin Gosman. Craig, why don't you give us a quick scouting report? What's it been like watching Kevin Gosman pitch this season? Outside of two innings, 
masterful and that's a big word to use yeah masterful he uh kevin gosman a few starts back he gave up seven runs in the first inning at houston a couple starts later he gave up five runs in the second inning at boston now if you take those two innings out and you know with a lot of pitchers fine if you take two innings out but that, that's 12 runs coming out now right like that's two blow up innings he's got 46 innings outside of those two innings he's got a 117 era in those other 46 innings i mean is that good is that going to work in those other 46 innings, guys, four walks against 64 strikeouts. Kevin Gosman has been incredible. He had a start a couple starts back where he generated 20 swings and misses on his splitter alone. You know, the something similar to, to Garrett Cole, where, where, where Garrett Cole is really at his most effective as when that fastball at the top of the zone is really good. Well, Gosman, same idea. When he's locating that fastball at the top of the zone, running it up there in the mid-90s, and then dropping that splitter on you, absolute nighty night he's been very good at, at home so far this season as well so uh, I, I know the yankee lineup it, it, it feels a bit feast or famine I, I i know the results haven't been you know what yankee fans are looking for but i'm always petrified of that rizzo uh, uh, judge and then especially when stanton's there that that's the man mountain man mountain and man mountain you know three in a row in this lineup that i'm petrified of so i'll never take this this yankee lineup uh, lightly but yes uh, uh, Gosman has been very good. His his at bats against Aaron Judge, that's the matchup to watch. You, oh, you, oh, you're really breaking news there, Craig. But but I mean, yeah, him and Gosman against Judge has been feast or famine. It's either a double for Judge, a home run for Judge, or a strikeout for Gosman. So I'm looking forward to this matchup quite a bit, Stacey. Yeah, it should be interesting to see how Judge does with um, the new dimensions up there. Although, yeah. you know, yeah. sometimes they don't matter because he hits them so high. Well, so at Rogers Center, yeah, that's true. Especially at Rogers Center. Holy moly. Some of those straightaway center field bombs. Goodness. I'll let you know when they've landed. How about that? There's a deal. <laughs> yeah, it's that tasty. one ball that he hit, that one ball that he hit to, that, that the guy caught and gave to the Yankee fan kid. That was the big story. Oh, that season. was so cool, too. Yeah. Yeah, that was a monster home run, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, Domingo Herman Stace uh, yeah. has been better in May, right? Yes. Last three starts for Herman against Cleveland and Tampa Bay, two starts against the Rays, 0 0.79 whip. Uh, he's coming off of a, an okay outing against Toronto, but I think this is a little different back in April, surrendered four earned in six innings. Uh, the Yankees lost that game eight to five. Of course, the Blue Jays won that game. Domingo Herman has been, a guy that I feel like was kind of forgotten about heading into the season, right? Where we're talking a lot about Domingo being the fifth starter for the Yankees, but just from your vantage point, watching Domingo pitch this year, um, what has that roller coaster been like? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, it's a roller coaster. Um, it, as you said, he's improved lately. And I thought that the start against Tampa, you know, not blowing things up because Tampa's tough. They're a scary team. You know, the Yankees have played them so far seven games and, you know, for him to not implode against them, I was very impressed with that coming from him. And he's just been improving slowly. You know, he had that really good start against the twins. Was it the twins that he went? Eight yeah. The sticky and had game. Like... Yeah. Oh, that's right. When they oh, accused man. him of sticky stuff. Yes. Um, he had 11, 11 strikeouts that, and, yeah. you know, eight <laughs> innings. And then he also had the really good start where Boone kind of screwed it up for him, took him out. And then the Yankees blew the game against the guardians. Um, and it looked like he was really starting to get on a roll there. But, you know, he has pitched better in May than he did in April. And it'll be interesting to see how he does against the Blue Jays lineup because they are scary. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we've talked about the inconsistencies on Locked on Yankees about the uh, Yankees offense. Craig, I know you've kind of detailed it out before about how you've had some inconsistencies as well in the Blue Jays lineup. Some inconsistencies, yes. The one thing that has remained is is the... The Blue Jays will lose. I guess it's true of a lot of different teams here, but when, when they're that bad with runners in scoring position, then then they're they're in a lot of trouble. Certainly for this offense, because a lot of home runs have left the building and on, on on off season moves. Yes, it it's a different offense this season is how I would put it for the Toronto Blue Jays significantly more flexibility significantly more uh, different ways to manufacture runs. So I love that part of it. I did think the offense would take a slight step backwards because, again, a lot of the, the pop did did go, even though the can manufacture runs differently fine. I didn't see it taking this much of a step back. It, it's middle of the pack in every offensive category, whereas for the last several years, it's been top three or four in every single offensive category. So for a lot of teams, they would take, hey, middle of the pack, that sounds okay to me. Well, for the Toronto Blue Jays, that is a significant decrease. 
uh, you have to go back like uh, at least I think it's 2014 is the last Blue Jay team that didn't hit uh, at least 200 home runs in a season. This team nowhere close to a pace for 200 home runs in a season. And in fact, our, our own our, our, our man Slim Daddy Vladdy here, our man uh, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. has yet to even hit a home run at Rogers Center. So if 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 you get a few Yankees could be could 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 be packing a home run for him in your travel bags here in this series that would be that would be much appreciated but yes the uh, Domingo Herman I do notice about him that his fly balls are up this season and and he has struggled a little bit on the road so I, there there is some glass half full things for the Toronto Blue Jays uh, tonight one of the really weird things when I was looking at uh, Domingo Herman he's had like 5 6 maybe like 7 3 to 2 road starts since the beginning of 2021 so and 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 he's on the the winning end of some and he's on the losing end of some but either way hey FanDuel right FanDuel one, one of our sponsors here so if you're going to put in a money on this particular game Domingo Herman is a 3 to 2 machine on the road there's an under there's an under now do you think while you were talking about the offense and how it's kind of not as good as you thought it would be. Do you think maybe this season is going to be similar for the Blue Jays where, you know, last season they started off kind of iffy and then they picked it up really a lot in the second half to where they were able to make the playoffs. Do you think it could be that sort of thing again, where they just kind of kick it into gear and pick it up maybe in the second half? What's well, a great call, and I do think that that can happen. And the reason I say that is uh, b- because of the renovations at Rogers Center, 25 of the first 37 games were on the road. So very, very road heavy start to this season. Now, of course, that has to even itself out. So in the second half of the season, the vast majority of the games are at Rogers Center. Blue Jays are 12 and three at Rogers Center right now. I can't remember. I was adding it up the other day. Their, their record at Rogers Center since coming back from COVID in 2021. Uh, but but I remember that the, the winning percentage is like like six uh, ninety three or something like that. Like they are winning games at the Rogers Center. And if there is. If there are nuances, you know, strategies to these new dimensions at Rogers Center, by the time the second half of the season comes, where it's a, where it's a home heavy schedule for the Blue Jays, by the time that comes, they will have figured that out. They right. will have figured out what those were. So a very good home team in the second half, guys, I think has the potential to be a great home team. And not for nothing, I know we're focusing on this series now, but the last two weeks of the season are all, for the Blue Jays, are all Tampa Bay and New York. So the, the, <laughs> there may need to be a magic elixir at at home for the Blue Jays as we come down the stretch in this insanely difficult American League East. Yeah, and this season with the uh, schedule where we're not playing yeah. each other as much and you can't depend on the head-to-head as much as you did in past years because you're missing a whole six games there yeah. head-to-head with the opponents. And I find that's going to be really interesting. There's going to be a lot of scoreboard watching up until that point where we're facing the Blue Jays and yeah. ta- and Tampa's facing the Blue Jays. And it's going to be interesting to see how that all turns out at the end of the season. It's going to be, it feels like a roller coaster ride for a lot of teams. Like a lot of weird things are happening so far this <laughs> season. Um, uncharacteristic starts for certain teams. Like if you look at the Cardinals, like who would have expected wow. that to happen? So yeah, I'm actually looking forward to the craziness of the rest of this season. Don't speak you're so funny. fast. <laughs> you're, you're, I, I know you, Stacey. You're not going to be happy about the craziness when it comes to the dog days. You're going to be like, I'm sick of this. I can't <laughs> do this anymore. I let, know me let me lie. Yeah. Let me lie and let me pretend. <laughs> you know, it's funny. You talk about the, the new schedule. Uh, I always, uh, uh, and I would love to get you guys' thoughts on this. I always liked the unbalanced schedule because of what Stacey mentioned. All this, all this new scoreboard watching right now. It was the Seattles. It was the, the 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 wild card hopefuls in the West, the wild card hopefuls in the Central. Who in September not only did they have to take care of their own business, but they had the scoreboard watch. They had to make sure the Jays lost, make sure the Yankees lost, make sure the Red Sox lost, raise, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. For the American League East teams, you didn't have to wonder how the other teams did. They were in front of you. Did you beat them or not? They were in front of you. There was a chance to take care of your own business. So yet yeah, it wasn't easy games. Of course, it wasn't easy games. This division, this division is the reason for this. Are we just being honest? Are we just having an open, honest conversation? That's the reason for the bald head, okay? So, no, it was never going to be easy, but I'd rather play those teams in, in, in September where you can take care of your own business. Yeah. Yeah. See, I don't really like the 19 games. I mean, who wants to play the Red Sox 19 times? I'm sick of it. So, I'm gl- I was actually happy for this new schedule. <laughs> for us, for Jays fans, it's who wants to play the Rays 19 times. Like, oh, my God, they beat us. Oh, anyway, let's move on. <laughs> yeah, they're uh, – right. woof. And finally, let's close out our Tuesday episode, this week's Tuesday episode of the Lockdown Blue Jay podcast with a deep dive of where the Blue Jays are individually. Well, and and we'll look at some team things as well as last night, 
was the quarter pull. It was a horrible game. I know we all wanted it in our rear view. Yes, we're looking forward to tonight's Blue Jay game to get that that bad taste out of our mouth. I know last night only finished seven four, like on paper, but if you saw the game, you know it, it was over right away. Things got ugly in that game right away. Alec Manoa booed at like I mean, holy moly, right? Holy moly. But it was the 41st game of the season, so it's unofficially we're at the quarter pole. We're 25% of the way through the season. Let's take a look and see what we've seen so far from the Toronto Blue Jays. Now, everydayers will know we've deep-dived this schedule a lot. We saw it coming. We, we, we did a lot of analysis as far as the start to this Blue Jays schedule. 25 of those first 37 games on the road. And we know the reason, right? It was because of the renovations, but still daunting start to the season for the Toronto Blue Jays. Just a 12 and 13 road record. That's not bad. Uh, some might say that's that's actually good. I say just, that's how I put it, just a 12 and 13 start to the season because uh, up to the road season, because it was at nine and seven going into that that nine game road trip uh, the, the last week and a half. That was just, holy moly, that was a three and six road trip, right? Two sweeps in there, a four game sweep at Boston and then two game sweep at Philly. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, really ugly. All told, Eight road series so far for the Blue Jays. They've won four. They've lost four. One definite aspect of Toronto Blue Jay baseball that has taken a step forward in so far in 2023 at the quarter pole is their record against lefties. The Toronto Blue Jays, they literally didn't have the worst record against lefties last season, but of any sort of playoff contender, of any team that you considered even decent, they had by far the worst record last season against lefties. They only won 12 of the 30 games they played against lefties last season. I mean, wow. This season, a five and four start. I mean, not eye pop emoji, right? You know, but but uh, but I can't say just five and four because when you see where the Blue Jays came from, I'm absolutely going to take a five and four, a winning record against lefties. I'm absolutely going to take it. Let's dive into the individual play. Talked at the beginning of the season again. Every day, as we remember, I've said that Springer, Bo, and Vlad have to do the heavy lifting for the offense at the top of this lineup. Yes, I'm happy with the additions that have been brought in, and many of them are off to great starts for the Toronto Blue Jays, but I just really feel that this top of the lineup has to be the one doing the heavy lifting if the Blue Jays are going to win the World Series this season. George Springer. 219 batting average George Springer is off to. His OPS is at 603. I mean, holy, I bet there's never been a time in his entire life where his OPS has been that low in his entire life at any level of baseball. That, that's just incredibly below, significantly below what his standard is, what his potential is. That 603 OPS, not only is it the worst of any Toronto Blue Jays starter, it's by far the worst. It's by far the worst. Holy moly. How about Bob Bichette? Has this guy been a bright light? Wow. I mean, we may we may be talking about an MVP candidate, especially if his defense gets straightened out, you know, at least shored up a little bit. His hitting for the third season in a row has been eye pop emoji. Bo leads the team in games played with 41. Bo leads the team in batting average 324. Overall, there's three Blue Jays above 300. Nice. Bo, 324. Bo leads the team in home runs with eight. Bo leads the team in runs scored with 27. Bo leads the team in hits with 56. He also leads all of baseball with 56 hits, looking for the third year in a row to lead the American League in hits. This guy has been a hitting machine. He's been a real, at the plate, he has been so, so fun to watch at the quarter pole so far this season. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. hitting 314. Got to like that. That's definitely up Vlad's alley. Just seven home runs, just 24 RBIs. I mean, that doesn't even project out to uh, home runs in the 30s, and it doesn't even project out to RBIs in the hundreds. I mean, Vlad, you've got to be absolutely kidding me on this. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. has as many home runs at Rogers Center this season as you or I have, which is to say zero, Vlad. A lot. 314 average. That That is to your potential, yes, but the power numbers, flat. got to get it going, got to get it going. Speaking of got to get it going, Matt Chapman. Well, Craig, he was the player of the month in April. Yeah, his, his April was incredible. Hitting 180 in May. We're halfway through May. He's hitting 180. He has as many home runs as May as, I'm going to use the line again, he has as many home runs in May as you or I have. Nada, nada, no home runs in May. Matt Chapman hits fourth or fifth in this Blue Jay lineup, and in the middle of, uh, middle of May, He's one RBI in the month of May. Wow, wow, wow. Doubled and scored uh, yesterday for the Blue Jays. Hopefully that's going to get him going. I mean, wow. Dalton Varsho. Now, very true that Varsho has been much better in May than April, but overall, just 221 on the season and an OPS under 700. Again, if you want a glass half full of that, he's been better in May, right? So hopefully things are kicking in for him. 
Whit Merrifield, 280, playing good defense wherever you put him. Whit Merrifield has been as advertised, he's been as good as we thought he was going to be. Uh, I'm so pleased with Whit, that, that Whit Merrifield is a Toronto Blue Jay. Speaking of a, being, someone being a Toronto Blue Jay, Kevin Kiermaier, his career average coming into the season was, was, was uh, I think it was like 258. It might, it might have even been 248. It, it was around that 250 mark, right? Kevin Kiermaier, always known for the defense, never known for the bat. He's hitting 321. Kevin Kiermaier's hitting 321 out of that nine spot for the Toronto Blue Jays. Holy moly. How about the Blue Jays catchers? There wasn't a position on the team that the Blue Jays got more production offensively and defensively from last season than the catcher spot. This season, holy moly. The Blue Jays catchers are combined 30 for 148. That's a 203 batting average. You've got to be kidding me. You have got to be kidding me. Completely unacceptable. Danny Jansen, Alejandro Kirk, pick it up. Brandon Belt on the season, a 244 average. Now, that's come way up, right? Because he's been on fire. Speaking of our show doing better in May, Belt's been on fire in May. Belt's hitting 387 in May. Belt's OP, uh, on base percentage in May is 472. He's on absolute fire. Hope that continues. Blue Jays seeing more and more of the exact reasons they brought him in to be that veteran presence and that veteran left-handed DH. Kevin Biggio, oh my goodness, minus 0.4 war, 138 batting average, 194 on base percentage. I mean, I've, you, you've heard me, the everydayers have heard me say, if your on base percentage isn't even 300, then you're terrible. Kevin Biggio would have to catch absolute fire to get up to terrible. Holy moly. Holy, I wanted him to be a trade piece. Not happening. I wanted Santiago Espinal to be a trade piece. He's hitting 175. Not happening. His his once dependable defense as well for Santiago Espinal. It's been terrible this season. Very, very, very sloppy. How about on the mound? Kevin Gosman. Jay's just 4-4 four and four in Gosman starts 0-2 in May, but we know he himself has been spectacular. You say Kikuchi. What a pleasant surprise Kikuchi has been. Blue Jays 7-1 and one with Kikuchi on the mound this season. 3-0 and oh at Rogers. Is that good? Holy moly. Chris Bassett. After that first start in St. Louis, wow. Jays 5-3 and three overall in Bassett starts. They've won four of his last five starts. The only loss in a Bassett start lately was when he left that Sunday game against the Mariners when the Jays were looking for a sweep a few Sundays back and uh, gave up that 8-4 lead, would end up losing 10-4. I mean, of course, that wasn't on Chris Bassett. Chris Bassett has been every bit the veteran presence and the veteran pitcher I hoped and thought he would be. Jose Barrios. A zero war. I mean, he hasn't been great. Blue Jays just four and four in his starts, but they're three and oh in his starts at Rogers Center. And Jose Barrios, at the very least, we're going to say at the quarter pole, we've seen flashes of brilliance, and we did not see really any flashes of brilliance last season. So are Barrios' overall numbers, you know, significantly better than last season? No, they're better. Are they significantly better? No. But the eye test will tell you he's been better so far at the quarter pole of 2023. Alec Manoa. Nine starts on the seasons, Blue Jays four and five. Blue Jays are under 500 with Alec Manoa on the mound. His home ERA has ballooned to 850. He was booed at the Rogers Center the last time out. I, I don't know what to say about Alec Manoa. Honestly, just for our own sanity, let's just let's just hope for the best and move on here. Let's highlight a few relievers. Eric Swanson, 1.0 war, one of the top on the Toronto Blue Jays, uh, a top for a pitcher. 20 games pitched, 1.33 ERA. His whip, his walks and hits per innings pitch, so anything below one is at 0 0.738 incredible he's been outstanding he's been as advertised he's been outstanding and jordan romano i know he's a bit polarizing a uh, polarizing sorry a lot, a lot of blue jay fans hope the blue jays can upgrade at the closer spot overall 10 for 12 in saves i will say this for romano his his whip of 1.188 since he became a closer that is his highest so we see a lot. I mean, Blue Jays overall have a very good record, right? We see a lot there to like, but man, did we ever list some players just now at the quarter mark that need to get going. And that'll do it for Tuesday's episode of the Locked On Blue Jay uh, podcast. If you're a, a, a fantasy baseball fan like myself, keep it locked on the Locked On Podcast Network for Locked On Fantasy Baseball. Tomorrow we'll get you set for the an incredible pitching matchup. Chris Bassett and Garrett Cole. Wow. Going to be joined again by Locked On Yankees as well to help deep dive that. Enjoy the game tonight. Hey, Blue Jays, let's go ahead and get back in the win column tonight.